Hello, and this is episode number nine of the Alphology 2 podcast. You are most welcome back. Uh, no preamble from me today. We're just going to dive straight into the topic. This is going to be one of two religion or Christianity based podcasts. So that's a bit of a pre warning because I know people get very upset when it comes to religion. Um, and that's that's but that's what I'm going to do. So this one is about the Old Testament. Basically, the Old Testament. I hate it much more. Much more than I would hate the New Testament. The New Testament, you know, like it's about Jesus mainly, and Jesus like definitely existed. Uh, and there's a lot of the teachings in there still sort of apply to to human life today. Whereas the Old Testament is basically just fantasy nonsense. It's just made up, and it's just beyond the realms of what could could actually happen but instead of just discarding it as a ridiculous text then i think that the stories in there because they are fantasy are quite good so it could be repurposed and repackaged as a fantasy film or fantasy tv show i was originally going to do it like my suggestions for how we can make it it's like a lord of the rings style epic and there's a few ideas sort of woven throughout what i've what i've come up with but really i decided to bin that idea and we'd do it as like a really sort of odd off-colour, funky sort of like TV series based on... So each one's based on a different book of the Bible and it's like Black Mirror so none of the episodes are linked or I guess more like Midsummer Murders and the fact that you might have the same actors reappearing but in unconnected unconnected episodes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say a few of my ideas for how that's going to work and who I would cast in the different roles and how I would I would sort of produce that as a uh, as a TV series, and hopefully that will give you some sort of semblance of entertainment. There's just a couple of things that I want to want to point out. That first of all, this would be really good for the Bible because a lot of people, particularly in my sort of circles, I guess Western world, um, young people, liberal society, aren't really aware of of the Old Testament and the stories, particularly if they weren't taught at school. So actually making it into a funky TV show might help raise awareness of the Old Testament. So uh, it might be a win-win for everybody. And I, I do appreciate that in my casting, I have whitewashed it a little bit. I understand that they are all Israeli, Hebrew, Arabic, Palestinian characters in the Bible. And these are all going to be pretty much white actors. Um it's just because I guess it's funnier, so just ignore it. Like if you if you're offended by that, just don't be. Um, I don't pick three stories to go through today. Don't want to don't want to do too many. Otherwise, with this this podcast, I've gone for hours. So just pick three stories in the Bible, ones that sort of a lot of people would know, and that's what we that's what we're running with. Uh, okay, so I'll dive straight in. Well, first of all, we have Noah's Ark. So the story of Noah's Ark is quite well known. Uh, I don't know if you if you if you don't know, I'll. I'll explain it to you now. Basically, God looks down at the world that he created. Obviously, he created the world. We'll touch on that later. So he looks down on the world that he created, and he decides that people are being dicks. So he looks at them and goes, look, you're being, I think the, the word used in the Bible is wicked. You are being wicked. You know, there, you know, there's lots of rapes and murders and violence in the street and drinking and stealing and all these people are being just general dickheads so his solution to that as an all-powerful all-loving being is that he wants to murder them all he's so just going to kill everybody and we'll start again um and that's what he does he says like yeah i'm going to just drown everybody in a flood but he realizes that he needs to uh to preserve some of the human race to keep it going. You know, obviously he doesn't, he doesn't want to completely destroy the human race. So he speaks to Noah, who's like a pretty decent lad. He goes, yeah, you seem a decent sort, Noah. Will you, some of your mates who are also all right and your family, build me a fuck off boat enough to put all of the animals or uh, enough of each type of animal to, to keep them going. Uh, you put all of them on and then they'll, when the flood comes, the, the boat will float and you'll survive and then you can start again and he's like yeah no worries crack on later on flood comes down kills everybody like like god does in fact i, I don't understand why he, why he didn't just kill everybody and just make some new humans we know he's able to make humans 
like he did it with Adam and Eve. So I don't know why he, he let Noah survive. Might as well just completely clean the slate and start again. But anyway, he didn't. So flood comes down, kills everybody. Uh, Noah gets all the animals together, which obviously would have been a logistical nightmare, but he does. Well done him. Uh, very impressive stuff. Um, and later on, he sends a dove off to find nature and the the, the, the dove brings back a an, an olive leaf, I think, an olive twig, which is a sign that the flood is going down. Then there's a rainbow and we all lived happily ever after is basically, basically the end of that story. Pretty fucking weird stuff. Not really a great religious text. She's like, yeah, it, if you stop, don't stop being dicks, God's going to drown you. Oh, well, some fucking nice God he is. Anyway, that's, that's, that's what he does. Uh, so this story, very, very good for sort of like dramatic reconstruction would be very entertaining. I know it's already been done with like Evan Almighty and stuff, but we are proceeding nonetheless, which means I can't really use Morgan Freeman as God. He's, he's already been used. So in the casting of God, I went for the next best thing, which is Patrick Stewart. I, I think often God will be off screen. He'll be getting his voice coming down like you do in, in religious like films, like God, his voice booms down and who is better to have a big booming voice coming down than Patrick Stewart also he's super famous so you know he'd, he'd market it quite well so Patrick Stewart comes in as God the casting of Noah would be a little bit more controversial a little bit more uh, I guess out there but I think that it's the right decision so we've got Jack Black as Noah which is pretty pretty cool, and, and like he's really grown as an actor. You know, he's come a long way since since the days of Tenacious D. He's a really really mature, good actor now. Will make a very good good Noah. And actually, even if he played it like he played Dewey Finn from School of Rock, that would be awesome. Like School of Rock main character merged into the Bible and the story of Noah's Ark is only a recipe for success, isn't it? It's only going to be a great creation. Um, I thought that this one, we could do it like all CGI, like Avatar or like The Hobbit recently, and it'd be like kind of funky CGI. And obviously you would need CGI to do the flooding and the and all the animals and stuff. And with that in mind, bearing in mind it is complete fantasy, uh, I've put the animals can talk because why not? Right, can make a difference in real. Um, I wanted to get the uh, voices of the uh, of the, the CGI animals done by the Hobbits from Lord of the Rings to so get like Sean Astin and, and Elijah Wood, and Martin Freeman to uh, to do voiceovers and it'd, be, and it'd be like, yeah, okay, so we're making like a sort of Lord of the Ringsy type thing, and you could like merge it together there, you know, keep the fantasy fans happy. I think that'd be pretty cool, and also talking CGI animals like. That's, you know, very popular these days, that sort of thing. Speaking of CGI, I think, bearing in mind that you have the whole thing as CGI, that the flood and the arc and, and the the scenes in it, you know, you have really big set pieces that, you know, the big flood and all the animals getting on, that would be really big CGI set, set pieces. So that would probably be, the production of that would probably be like really good. But also, because it's so CGI, you have like the actual characters, like Jack Black's character, Noah, he'd be like walking around in like a CGI background, like a green screen, which I think would end up looking a little bit like Spy Kids 3D. I don't know if you remember that film, the third Spy Kids film, where they go into like a gaming world and it's all 3D apart from just like their heads and their their, their bodies, which is class. And, and actually the, what, what the world needs is more Spy Kids Bible crossovers. If you, if you hadn't considered it before, you can consider it now and you can realize that that is the truth. The CGI would have a, a great benefit on things like the death scenes at the start. So like you could have some really awesome like fight scenes to show the people being wicked, like in, I don't know, 300 or Troy, you know, really cool, like badass slick fight scenes. And then great drowning scenes when God decides to drown everybody as well. It'd be really good sort of CGI element to it so i think that would be really good I, I i think all those ideas would make for an awesome tv show that people would watch so do send me funding moving on we'll move on to the next the next book that i have written down in front of me which is the book of exodus exodus in case you're not aware is about moses and the ten commandments 
pretty interesting bloke is Moses. So he was born and I think he was adopted by an Egyptian princess. And he was either sort of like an Arab or he, he, well, Hebrew, so he, he was a Jew. And uh, anyway, he gets adopted and he grows up. And one day he sees an Egyptian kicking the shit out of somebody. He might have been a fellow sort of Hebrew, Arabic individual. And um, he intervenes and he ends up killing the Egyptian. And he then falls out with the Pharaoh over that. And God, like, starts messing, like, playing the Pharaoh and Moses off against each other. And in the end, Moses gets sentenced to death, but escapes. And then God med meddles some more in, in the whole thing and starts sending plagues of locusts and turning all the water into, into blood. And killing all the firstborns, just like you know, the great chap that God is to piss off the Pharaoh. So then the Pharaoh chases Moses and Moses takes all the Jewish slaves with him, I think. I actually haven't read it, so this, this could all be wrong. And he chases them out to the Red Sea and they get to the Red Sea and Moses parts it, which... Is pretty cool. Very big, like Gandalf moment. That though, isn't it? It's like you shall not pass that. All that jazz, which yeah, really cool moment. And so he parts the Red Sea. All of the the the, the blokes and, and Moses and his his guys they they run across the gap in the Red Sea. And as the Pharaoh and his Egyptian dudes chase him across, Moses like puts it back. I think this is all with the help of God. He's engineered this whole thing, and then it kills all the Egyptians and it's like well well done me they then have like 40 years in the wilderness which is a bit weird like 40 years it's quite quite long time to be out in the wilderness and they only eat like bread I think it's like honey bread uh, and Moses goes off he makes some commandments and then goes off for ages which I don't really get and then people think he's not coming back so they start like sacrificing goats and then worshipping statues to try and like bring Moses back. And he comes back and he sees they're worshipping statues and sacrificing goats. He's like, oh, fuck's sake, lads. So I think he has them murdered, which is weird. Weird time that when he has everyone else murdered. Uh, but, but he does. He has them murdered. And then he write, he breaks the, the, the previous commandments. He smashes the, the slabs that they're written on and, and creates the Ten Commandments. Um, and all through all this, he has a wife, by the way, and she's not really in it, but he has one, and that's pretty much the the story of Moses, as far as I know it. So, how I'm gonna gonna recreate that? Obviously, Patrick Stewart continues in his role as God. It's good to have some consistency across the board. Uh, you're not gonna, you know, God's not gonna change in that short space of time, is he? So, uh, yeah, Patrick Stewart continues his role as God. It's a, a, a good trick with with Moses actually, where I'm going to cast John Travolta as as Moses, and John Travolta is pretty good looking bloke, you know, for, for his age. You know, yeah, back when he was in the 70s, he was extremely good looking, but these days, obviously, he has aged quite a bit. But he hasn't aged enough to the age of Moses. I think Moses was 900 years old during all this. Although I could be wrong because that could have been Noah. But I'm gonna go and say that it was it was Moses. He was 900 years old, and we could like do some product placement for like moisturizer or skincare and say, look how young this 900 year old Moses looks. You know, John Travolta, and he looks about, you know, 60 odd. I think he might be 70, but you know, he looks 60 odd. He look, he's in great nick. So chance for some money there, could be a good bit of product placement for some moisturizer. In terms of the rest of the casting, um, his wife, I think it was called Zipporah, I'm gonna get her played by Eddie Murphy in like drag in the in the way that he does it in like Norbit <laughs> where it's like a big big fat lady and he's gonna be Moses' wife and it'd be funny because a bit like the comic relief like bossing him around all the time and being really sassy I think that would be that would be class and really I think John Travolta and Eddie Murphy would have good sort of chemistry on set so in terms of the rest of the casting uh, I've gone for Neil Patrick Harris as the Pharaoh, you know, young-ish Pharaoh, a bit cocky, you know, sort sort of like he is in How I Met Your Mother, a bit bit cocky, bit bit loose, bit 
shoot from the hip sort of guy up against John Travolta, who would be sort of like more wise and, and old and more developed character. So that that would be good. And you've got God as Patrick Stewart as well. So sort of a, a three-way standoff between all of them. There's all, all three quite different styles, and I think they compete quite well with each other. The final person I wanted to cast in this was Nicolas Cage. Because when Moses gets the death penalty for killing that Egyptian, there's got to be a bit of a fight scene in there. So he's just kind of a little cameo as the Egyptian who gets killed by Moses, which I think would be awesome. And it would be like Face Off 2, like bringing back the actors from Face Off, i.e. John Travolta and Nicolas Cage, in like a reunion, which everyone wants to see, like Face Off 2, which the world needs. The world needs another Face Off. Look, that would be pretty much all I've got on Exodus. Uh, there's a couple of other little things I wanted to, to sprinkle in there, which is, you yeah, know, like the plagues of Egypt and the Red Sea, would be, again, pretty cool with the CGI. That would be, that would be awesome. There, there's a thing where they fight over areas of Transjordan. I thought that'd be really, really cheap gag of, you know, Katie Price with a beard. But then I thought that's really sort of like really shit joke, cheap and sort of insensitive. So we'll strike that one off. Uh, the last little good little gag for this one is that Moses wrote the original commandments on stone tablets and then destroyed them and, and wrote the Ten Commandments again on, on, on a new stone tablet. And I thought that we could modernize it and have them written on iPads, like obviously like modern tablets. Uh, like hashtag modern tablets. Uh, and so he breaks them. So he, he sees he sees the tablets that he's angry with he, he, and, he, and he smashes them. You know, costs him yeah, thousands to repair. You know, he smashed the screen on a brand new like, iPad Pro. So he takes it to one of those places in the shopping center where they do the, like those dodgy repairs. But obviously, he doesn't go to the legit Apple store, so they're not repaired properly. And uh, it does somewhat ruin his thing, so he has to buy a new one. He has to get a new tablet to do it. I thought that would be quite a decent sort of gag, but, you know, be quite expensive, all the iPads and the production costs. I'm already spending quite a lot on the cast, so you never know. And look, that's pretty much it on Exodus. So we'll move on to the final one, which is Genesis. If you don't know the story of Genesis, it's where God creates the Earth in six days and then has a day off on the seventh day. Um, although as far as I'm concerned, he actually hasn't been back to work since. So it's a bit bit weird to say, oh, well, you have the seventh day off. Well, he's had every day off since, hasn't he? Um, for the last 14 billion years or, or 5,000 years, depending on on what you believe. Uh, he hasn't really been taking an active an active role. So yeah, he, look, he, he creates the earth in six days. And the, his, his last thing that he does is he like, he creates men. And he says, oh, I want men to be like me. So he creates a man, he creates a man, he creates Adam. He's the first man. He's like, yeah, there you are. That's 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 what I'm like, so you're me. And he's like, oh, well, Adam must be lonely. So he creates a woman using Adam's ribs. So he you know, breaks a bit off Adam and, and, and creates a woman, which is cool. So he gives him this big garden. He says, you can do whatever you like, but you can't eat apples off this one tree for you know, some unknown reason, they're bad apples, you can't eat them, you're not allowed, even though he created them in the first place. I, I, I don't know, if maybe it's some sort of test. Um, but anyway, they eat the apples because Eve is tempted by a, a walking snake with legs. And the snake's like, yeah, you should eat the apples, mate. They're, 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 they're really nice, they're yum. And uh, she's like, yeah, great, I'll, I'll have one then. Why not? You know, can't be that bad. What, what's he going to, what is God going to do? You know, it's only one apple. Can't hurt. Anyway, she has one and God's like, oh, you dick. I told you not to. And he's like, well, snake, you, for a start, you're using, you're losing your legs. No legs for you. You could be a slithery wanker for the rest of your life. So snakes don't have legs because of that reason, which actually I think they've really capitalized on. They've done well with that. So they, they managed to managed to survive the the leglessness. But yeah, he, he removed their legs and he, then he said to Eve, he said, Adam, look, you know, you, you're both banished from the garden. You've got to go and live out in the big wide world, which is shit. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be awful. But Eve, you like, because it was you who made the initial mistake, then 
you're going to have to create new humans by forcing their head out of your vagina. And all women from there, from there, that point on are going to have to shove heads through their vaginas, which is a bit, bit of a harsh punishment really for eating an apple and for giving one to Adam, but that's what he went for. So, and that was, that's sort of the story of Adam and Eve. And they then go on and live out in the world. And that's, they, they had created new humans and apparently we're now, we're now here. So, in terms of casting for this one, uh, I want to change God because God's going to be very young at this point. He's like the original, very start of God. Uh, so he can't be Patrick Stewart. So I was going to go with Harry Styles because he's young and he's good looking. He's also good for marketing it, get lots of lots of the young audience, lots of the One Direction fans uh, into watching this. And I, he did impress me in Dunkirk. You know, I thought he, he was a bit of a token choice, you know, just to, to get people in. But actually, I, I was impressed with his performance at Dunkirk. So I think he can do the job of playing young God. Uh, Adam and Eve, gone for the two most attractive people I can, because there's going to be a sex scene. So I've gone with Ryan Reynolds and Scarlett Johansson, uh, because they are just smoking hot. But not only they're smoking hot, also decent actors. So, you know, we're not just going based on looks. You know, they get in on merit too. So, you know, hot sex and great acting is what you want. And honestly, who doesn't want to see a bit of soft porn between Ryan Reynolds and, and Scarlett Johansson? I mean, everybody wants to see that. Uh, in terms of the snake, got really only one option. There's only one person who could play the snake. Uh, it, it, it's it's almost, it almost picks itself, particularly in line with the Lord of the Rings style epic stuff. You know, those ideas are threaded throughout, which is Andy Serkis, obviously. Like Andy Serkis is the best person to play. Just play it like you played Gollum. The tempting snake is just literally the same. You could even use the same motion capture and body, yeah, you know, for the snake with legs, as Gollum. It'd be fine. Like that would actually be so good. I mean, obviously, he'd be CGI, and then he could do the Slytherin afterwards when he's when he's got no legs. So Andy Circus would be the best person for that. The, the guy who plays Steve the Pirate in, in in Dodgeball is probably a close second, but Andy Circus would nail that role. So Andy Circus as as the snake, tempting. Scarlett Johansson to give apples to Ryan Reynolds and ultimately pissing Harry Styles off, which is, would be class. <laughs> I think that would be a really cool, a really cool way of doing it. And that's a very good way of reconstructing Genesis. And obviously the CGI would play a part again with, you know, the beautiful Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden. Yeah. The beautiful Garden of Eden and uh, creation of the universe and you know god doing the bruce almighty thing where he's like putting the stars in the sky and making the moon bigger and stuff like that so that that would that would be awesome I, I thought a cool thing to have at the end would be like a flash forward to to now so adam and eve are shown the future that they created by being such dicks in the garden of eden uh so they get to see like things that have been that are so bad in the future which wouldn't have happened if they would have just behaved themselves. I think those things will probably be Trump getting elected. You got a fucking hell. That's that's ridiculous. Is this what the future humans did? How did it all go so wrong? And then sort of two potentially even worse atrocities, which are the creation of barbecue sauce and the people who enjoy eating barbecue sauce. Like, what the fuck is happening there? How did we get to that? And... The, the third one was the fact that Arrested Development was allowed to be on TV. Like, that was allowed to, to, to be put out there, to be enjoyed by literally millions of people. And there are millions of people who do enjoy it, which is, is madness, really, because it, it's garbage. It's the Donald Trump and barbecue sauce of TV. So they, they get to see these things and that they, they can just have a good, hard think about what they've done, Adam and Eve be good good little ending for, for for that show look that's pretty much it on the whole repackaging the bible thing hopefully you've enjoyed that so i'll round it off there um do subscribe give high ratings or thumbs up if you so wish be more podcasts coming out every sunday and some wednesdays and you can follow me on twitter alphology2 and instagram alphology underscore two and you can also catch the podcast on the website, which is alphology2.com. Uh, you know, do stay in touch with it because it's going to carry on for the time being. So, and if you, if you want to get in touch with with me and 
you know, either abuse the podcast or give me some ideas or talk about it, then, then do that. Uh, and other than that, thank you very much for listening. Do tune in next time and I will see you later. Thank you.